Oh, hi everyone, this is Kieran Hoversapien for Filmstorm Studios, and today I'm just going to make a quick tutorial about how to make a ragdoll for your player and how to activate it. So, um, I've had a few requests about this, and um, I'm going to show you how to create it. So, as you see, I've actually expanded my player object, and it's just a simple biped structure. So, we've got our left leg, right leg, spines, um, you've got your arms, the shoulders, and your head. So, this is basically all you need. And all you need to do is come up, make sure you don't have anything selected. So you click down in the little gray bit to unselect everything. Go up to your game object, 3D object, and click on Ragdoll. And you'll see this little dialog box pops up. And all we want to do is just go through and drag our character into um, these different sections. So your pelvis is your hip, your left hip is your left leg up, left knee is left leg, and left foot is this one, the same on this one, so left leg up, left right leg, and right foot. Now you want your left arm, so it's your left shoulder, actually cancel, let's just double check, so let's see where this position is, so actually left arm would be left arm, left elbow is in the elbow, your right arm is the right arm, your right elbow is right elbow, middle spine. So let's find that one. Uh, let's have a look which one looks more like middle spine. And I would say it would almost be, let's, let's make it spine one. Spine one should be a good one. And let's put the head in there. You don't need to worry about any of these other um, selections. And let's just say create. And look at that, it's smartly created all of the joints and they all seem to be relatively good sizes. Maybe the arms might need to come down a tiny bit. So you can actually come to your capsule collider that it's created and just reduce the radius. Let's make it instead of 0.09, let's make it 0.08 or maybe even smaller. Let's make it like three. You just want it to encapsulate the arm. So let's make it seven. Yeah, seven, seven is good a good radius. Let's make that 0.072. Oh, maybe this one might need to be a bit smaller. 0.6, that's good. And all of the other ones should be fine. Everything else looks good. Um, the legs um, are actually intersecting, so you can't have um, intersections. So let's just quickly reduce these ones. Let's make this one 0.04. Let's bring this one up to 0.8, that actually, 0.8 is quite good actually. So let's make our right leg, where's our right leg? 0.8, so let's knock out these ones. 0.8, perfect. Um, let's come back up, let's check anything else is intersecting. Um, the two upper legs. So let's make this one 0.08. Perfect, and let's make the right upper leg 0 0.08, 0 0.08, excellent. Let's double check everything else looks perfect, except the head, the head is, or is it the, which one was it, spine? Uh, no, that was just the, the character controller. Perfect, everything looks perfect. So now you'll notice if we press play, the character doesn't activate um, in the ragdoll. So just come to here, and all you need to do is turn off the animator, and look at that, we have a, a ragdoll system happening. And then you can actually reset this by um, unticking the animator. So we need a script to actually activate and deactivate this animator controller. So let's quickly create that. So let's just save this and then say if you get hit enough times you can actually say enemy deal damage and then do a float comparison and then say oh is, if it's zero then activate that um the ragdoll by deactivating this script so basically let's go into here let's create a fsm and let's call this guy test underscore ragdoll and by the way, this system is from our first tutorial for our third person character system that I've been creating because I've had a lot of requests about it. So check that out on the channel. I'll put a link in the description to, for the first um, part. 
Um, so just come into our edit and let's just create wait for button. And we want to quickly create a new input. We're just going to create a 19th one. And we're going to call this ragdoll. And our positive button will be, let's say K for a kill. Perfect, that's all done. Now let's come back to our player model. And we're going to say action browser, get button down. We're going to say when our ragdoll ragdoll button is down, we're going to send an event to, to ragdoll. Excellent, let's create a new state. Let's add that transition, drag that one in. And we're going to create another one. We're going to say ragdolling for ragdolling. And we're going to say finished back to our button. So on our button down, we're going to say go to ragdoll. We're going to actually drag this guy into here, set property, and he's going to be enabled. So make sure you click that. That is all set up. Now let's get this one, uh, drag and paste this in. On get button down of ragdoll again, it's going to be unenabled. So when we come into here, the property of this animator will be turned off and it will be all good. So all we need to do now is actually add a tiny weight. So let's put this in here, say finished. So this will just let the um, the system take a second to, for the player to lift his finger off the K button. So let's push weight, otherwise it will cycle really quickly. So let's make it 0 0.09, or oh, actually no, 0 0.2 should be, should be a good number and say finished. We're just gonna call this guy weight. You can actually color your states if you want, so you can make that green. You can even um, customize the uh, lines, so you can say link style. You can actually make it a circuit. I haven't actually explained this before, but that way if you want straight lines um, to make it easier for you to follow, you can even um, make the link color. So if it's, if it's going toward the dangerous thing, you can actually say, and if it's if it's a happy thing, you can make it go back to there. So that's a little bit of styling for you. And you can also explain stuff and say, say this is going to be a wait command, stuff like that. So if you pass it off to other players or um, designers, they can actually read about it and they'll understand what you're doing. So let's test it out. Let's press play. All right, let's turn off our gizmos. All right, so I'm running around the map. And let me press K, and she died. So all we need to do now is actually, we need to set another one to turn off our character controller because that sometimes um, will screw up the ragdoll. Uh, it, it doesn't do it in our case, but it might happen to you. So let's just quickly set that up, same idea. Just go to here, set property. Uh, you actually come to here, say enabled, make sure it's on for the start. And then you can just copy it, paste it in here, and turn it off. Alrighty, now we can close this guy out again. And let's press play. And okay. And she stacked it. So another quick way to actually show what is happening. Let's um let's drop a shader on the ground. Let's create a new folder for materials and jump into it, create a new material. I'm gonna call this ground, just so we can see it when we're sliding. Drag that onto it. Let's go in here, let's just find a odd looking thing. Let's, let's tile it out, let's make it about 10 by 10. Or even not even that, let's make it 20 by 20. Lovely. We can make it um, some sort of green. Lovely, and then let's um, come in and create just a box so we can get her to walk up it. Let's just tilt it down and extend it out. Lovely. All right, this is gonna be perfect and then we we'll, should be able to see a, a better um, movement and she, you'll notice that she correctly goes up and down um, ramps and stuff as well. So if I come up here and press K, and then she correctly ragdolled. I press K again, and she's just gonna fly around. Look at that, look at that glitch. 
Alrighty. So that's basically how to create a very simple um, system. So if you press K, kills her. Press K again. It will not bring her back to life. So we can probably come back here and just uh, check out what's happening. So both of them get re-enabled. Both of them turn off. So yeah, that's pretty much just make a simple system. I mean, if you if you ragged all a person, you're not expecting them to get back up unless you have an animation to blend back into from. So say if she's on her back, you probably have an animation to blend her back onto her feet again. But that's quite complicated and probably beyond the scope of this quick tutorial. So if you if you're interested in that, that's kind of um you'd probably see that kind of technique in Grand Theft Auto or Assassin's Creed if you jump off a building and you um your body doesn't support its own weight and you fall over. So you, you kinda come down from a landing and you stack it kind of like that, except I I just press K when, when she fell to the ground there. But that's kind of um that's pretty much how they do it. They say, Oh if she's falling for too long we're gonna um we're going to let her die. So let's press the button and she'll trip and fall. And you can even apply the same technique to enemies. You can say, hey, if, you, if it has enough damage, create the ragdoll and then um, to flip out. So that, that's, that's essentially how they do it. So I hope you found this um, short tutorial interesting. I um, hope you uh, managed to set up your own ragdoll system like that. And if you have any questions, of course, send me a message or write a comment and I'll definitely get back to you. Um, this has been Kiranova Sapien for Filmstorm Studios. And I will see you in part two of the third person character system tutorial and also part seven of the FPS system tutorial. All the systems. Alrighty guys, I'll see you then.